Hi y'all, Jay Wilson from Onyx Reporting here. I'm the lead trainer and uh, Jet Reports consultant at Onyx Reporting. And I'm here to share with you kind of a mentoring slash tutorial session on using Jet Professional. It's gonna be a little bit longer than the usual 10 minutes, but that's because I'm responding to uh, a question that received by a user via email um, about sorting. So here's our question. Is it easy to sort by a field that is from a linked table? Can I sort by multiple fields that may be from the primary and linked tables? Or is it easier to train users to use the native Excel features to sort? Okay, if you don't know what a linked table is, don't worry, I'll get into that a little bit during this presentation. Um, but kind of within the question the user was asking me, there's some fundamental stuff that we need to cover, including number one, the most basic sin of jet reports that pretty much every user commits. We'll talk about that first. Um, I'll, I'll recommend two alternative workflows to get around this problem that pretty much everybody has and, tr and handles incorrectly. That'll be piece number one. In piece number two, I'll also go over basic sorting and talk about sorting based on linked tables, which is what the original question was about, but like I said, have to put some groundwork in there first. Then last bit I'll talk about is how to implement dynamic sorting. Right then, let's get to it. Um, to Before we begin our conversation about sorting, I guess it kind of helps to have a report. So I'm going to use the JET browser here. And in the browser, I've pulled up the item ledger entry table. I'm just going to grab a couple fields. Um, so I've got cost, item number, maybe item, uh, item category code appears to be blank. Um, I'll grab quantity, posting date, source number. I'm just holding down control as I click. Um, and then once I've selected all the fields that I want, I'm going to drag and drop into Excel. And then Excel does not do what I want it to do. What did you do there? NP drop. There we go. All right. Uh, interesting. All right. So when you do drag and drop out of the browser, it should just do um, it should just drop this into your spreadsheet where you have one NL rows function and a bunch of NF functions. If you're not familiar with this functionality using the Jet browser, you should probably find a tutorial video on it because this is probably the fastest and easiest way of building your report. Um, I'm going to add a filter here for posting date. I'll put in oh, 0112015 dot dot. Obviously, you should put in a date range, uh, a filter that makes sense to you based off of whatever table you chose to use. Um, and then you're going to find your NL rows function. Notice it currently doesn't have any filters. Um, and of course, we're going to add some filters to it. So we'll just say filter by posting date. Make that an absolute cell reference. And we're off to the races. Okay, so we have our basic report here. Um, once you've run the report, whatever it looks like, this is the part I, I see a lot of people go wrong. They'll say, hey, I've got this report, it's beautiful, it shows me items, and I wanna filter by, or I wanna sort by the source number. So what I'll see people do is I'll see them go into the data tab here, they'll click sort, and they'll say, oh, I wanna sort by source number, what have you. Um, and then they'll click sort, and it looks like it does what you want it to do. And in fact, it does, you know, sort the report. But you shouldn't do this. Okay. Alternatively, what I'll see people do is instead of just using the sort function, even worse, they'll go insert table, and they'll convert their jet report into a table, and then start applying filters or sorting that way. It's kind of cool, it's exciting, it, it gets the job done that you want it to do, but this is, I'd say, bad practice. Um, what it encourages people to do is treat JET reports like any other spreadsheet, and it's not the case. Um, because when you go to rerun your report, it reverts back to what it originally was, or in some cases, you can corrupt 
your workbook. You can make it so that the JET report will no longer run, and then you have to go hire a consultant to fix it, or you have to rebuild the report from scratch. Um, any of these things can happen. The cardinal sin, if you will, is you do not modify a JET professional report in report mode. That's the sin, as it were. That's the thing you should not do. So when I say turn it into a table after the fact, or when I say change the sort order after the fact, that's modifying the structure of the spreadsheet and that could cause corruption depending on what you do. So some alternative workflows that I can strongly recommend um, is after you've run your JET report, should you choose to, you can run the report through the scheduler. Now when you run through the report through the scheduler, you um, can create a new task. Um, I hope you're already familiar with the scheduler, and if you're not, please, again, find a tutorial video on it that will go over in greater depth. But one of the output options of the scheduler is to output as a values-only workbook. And what this option will do is when you run your JET report, it will strip out all of the JET functions. So what are JET functions? NL, NF, and PGL. These are all JET functions. Um, and when they're stripped out, all that's left is a values-only workbook, basically static numbers. And if this spreadsheet is just static numbers, I'm happy for you to, you know, change the structure, insert columns, turn it into a table, change the sort order, because there's no risk of you rerunning the report, losing all your work, or corrupting the workbook, because it's not a JET workbook anymore. It's just a values-only spreadsheet. So that's option number one. use values only workbook. That's not how you spell workbook. Workbook in the JET scheduler. This is a workflow um, for giving users the ability to modify their workbooks after they've run the report. The other alternative is if you really want a table, then build a table. There is a tool called the Table Builder, which has all, you know, that will basically let you build your JET report and output a table. Um, again, there's tutorials on the Table Builder. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert this report here into a table. Um, so I'm just going to make a copy of this workbook. Okay. I'm just going to change this to table. No, let me do it in the, in the wizard so you can actually see it. <laughs> All right. Instead of doing NL rows, I have the option of choosing NL table, which will output a table. Now, if I leave the field argument blank, it will literally turn every field in the item ledger entry table. I've selected the fields that I want, so what I'll do is I'll just put a cell reference up here to say these are the fields I want to return. Um, if you are looking at individual transactions, every record in the table, you must either include the record key for the table, so in this case the entry number, or you can use the include duplicates option, which again says um, return every row in the table. Um, you can also use table name equals to give a name to the table that you create. So in this case, I'm just going to call it my report. Okay. When I create an NL table function, you can see here it says table, all of my NFs break because NFs require um, a record key, which I no longer have. Um, I'm going to run this report. I know I'm throwing a lot of words out there, but I'm going to wrap this up in a bow so it makes sense. Um, in any event, when I run the NL table function, you can see here are all of the columns, returned item number, quantity, posting date, source number, source type, but this object here in, in my report is a true table, which I can treat like any other 
table and I can change the sort order you know manually if I want and again I used NL table to get that job done and if you're not familiar with working in um, the Jet Function Wizard to build your own reports you can use a table builder to do the same thing. In fact, I encourage you, um, if you're watching this tutorial, to use a table builder, recreate this report by pulling these columns, and then take a, a look at what the output is. You will see table names equals. You will see include duplicates equals true. Um, and hopefully this tutorial will kind of explain what those specific arguments do. <clears throat> One of the things I really do like about the NL table um, function or the table builder functionality is if you say, hey, I want to now take my data and, I don't know, apply the data mining app to it, the data mining um, add-on to it, or if you say I want to take my data and summarize it with a pivot table, right? All of those things you can do um, if you're using NL table with the table name equals argument. So you can see here that the table range is called my report. All right, let's get back to our, my overview of all the things I said I would cover. So here, use NL table or table builder. So these are your alternative workflows if users require um, interactivity with a um, report or in, insofar as, you know, changing filters and sort orders after you run the report. Let's talk a little bit about how to just do basic sorting in Jet Professional. So I've got here um, the original NL rows function, NL rows report that I built using the table builder. Um, there is no sort, well, that's not true. The default sort order is the um, unique identifier for the table. So in this case, it's the item ledger entry table. The default sort order will be the entry number. If I want to change the sort order, let's say I wanted to sort by um, item number. What you have to do is you have to modify your NL rows function and you have to here in the filters area, you would say, okay, I want to sort by item number. You have to add it as a filter argument. Now filters come in pairs. You have to specify the field and the value that you want to filter by. You can't leave it blank. So if I click on evaluate function, it'll say empty filter not allowed. There must be a value here, which is why I'll put a cell reference into E9 where I've put in a star. So star of course means give everything. So now I'm saying filter by posting date and item number, but I'm including all item numbers. So basically, I'm not filtering, if that makes sense. I don't know if you've noticed this tooltip ever, but here to the left of the item number, I can click on this little change sort order button, and you'll see it toggles between plus, minus, blank, plus, minus, blank. So if I put in a plus, that says sort by item number ascending, and conversely, if I do a minus, it says sort by item number descending. That makes sense. You can have um, multiple sorts. So I can sort by posting date and item number. Hear me carefully. Filtering. The order that you enter your filters in does not matter. So I can say filter by posting date, then filter by item number. The order of filters does not matter because they're all applied simultaneously, more or less. However, sort order does matter. So if I have my um, filters organized like this, first it will sort by posting date, then it will sort by item numbers. So I would see, you know, all activity on January 1st, sorted by item. Then all activity on January 2nd, sorted by item. If you want it the other way around, you have to change the sort order. So I would have to put, if I did this, I would see each item, item A, sorted by date. Item B, sorted by date. Item C, sorted by date. So you can, you know, sort order does matter whereas um, filter order does not. Hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to click OK here and run the report so you can see what I'm talking about. 
when I run this report, because the plus is in front of the item, first it will sort by items, then it will sort by posting date. So here's all of my 100s, 1100s, 1200s, and you can see it's ascending by item, followed by posting date. So let's go find something that has more activity. This guy here, 61, 99, 910, 911. This is US, US dates, not British dates. This column just looks funny um, because these are quantities, and quantities should be formatted as numbers. Again, going back to my cardinal rule, do not modify a report in report mode. One thing I see people do is they'll run their report and then they'll apply all sorts of uh, formatting in report mode, like they might choose this column and set it as a number, and then they might choose this and set the formatting. And again, usually slash sometimes it works to apply formatting in report mode. But what you should do is put it in design mode when you make your changes. Just get in the habit, only make changes in design mode. Um, but let's circle back. Basic sorting just says put a plus or minus in front of the filter field. Now I put in in front of the NL rows function. There are obviously other replicators as well. You can replicate by columns and sheets, NL columns, NL sheets. Um, but the plus or minus basically always goes in front of the replicator. All right, let's get to Alex's original question, which was how do you sort on a linked table? Whew. All right, we're gonna have to do a drastic overhaul to make this make sense. Let me do a copy here. Let's say hypothetically that there is a field called inventory posting group. Um, and the invent, if I could spell, inventory posting group, inventory posting group. The inventory posting group is a field on the item table. Um, and you know, it could have been any field on the item table. And I know a lot of you have customizations in NAV for, you know, I need to add this specific field here or there, whatever. Um, but the inventory posting group is item on the item card, and this report is built against the item ledger entry. Okay. Let me start by pulling in the inventory posting group of this item. So here's my item number 10,000. Inventory posting group is on the item card. How many, <laughs> got it. How many items have this item number? Only one. So I'm going to use an NL first to pull up the inventory posting group of that item. It's not an NF, it's gonna be an NL first to the item table, pull the inventory posting group filter where the item number, and it's just called number, is equal to the value in this row. All right. So I run this report. Here are all of my different inventory posting groups for each uh, for each item. And again, my question is how do I sort by inventory posting group? Well, I'll have to create a linked table. Well, I'm already into why, okay, let me start by making the linked table. Let's do link equals link equals to the item table. Um, now the common field between the item and the item ledger entry are where the number field in the item table is equal to the item number in the item ledger entry. I can now add the filter for inventory posting group. So I can say inventory posting group is equal to raw. 
Okay. Um, when I run my report, the only items returned should be in the raw inventory posting group. No, it's not called raw. Let me do one that I know exists. Finished. Okay, sorry. Okay, so all of the items returned are finished and raw materials and I think work in progress or whatever the inventory posting group is not represented in this report. Now if I did a star, I should see all of my items. finished, finished, raw mat, finished, finished, raw mat. And now we get to the meat of the question, which is, what if I want to um, filter, sorry, sort by the inventory posting group? So I'll just put a plus in. Now, unless I'm crazy, this should not work. So it's finished, finished, raw mat, finished, finished, raw mat, finished, finished, raw mat. Okay, let's think this through. Why do we see this behavior? I'm going to write this down. Link equals applies filters does not apply sorting. The link equals argument applies filters. It does not apply sorting. Think it through. What does link equals do? Link equals says, hey, for any given item, in this table, does it have this inventory posting group? And the answer is yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. But it doesn't matter if I look in the item table and the item table is sorted or not. It's just yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So it can't, you know, the sort order of the lookup table, as it were, the sort order of the link table doesn't matter. When it comes to sorting, you can only sort in the main table. So I can only sort by fields in the item ledger entry table. I cannot sort by a field in the linked table. I can put a sort order in here all day. All it will do is slow down my report. It will not change my results. All the link equals does is it applies filters. It does not apply sorting. So you might say, J. I really need to sort by inventory posting group. And I'll say, okay, fine. If you really need to sort by the inventory posting group, you can only, let me finish the statement here. The sorting only apply, applies to the primary table. So then you have to switch the order that you put the tables in. So let me just type it in just for this uh, interest of speed. And I'll rose. So I'll start with the item table. And I'll make a list of inventory posting groups. Actually, I'm just going to copy this. Uh, in column B, I'm going to write a new function, nl rows, start with the item table, make a list of inventory posting groups, filter where the inventory posting group is equal to whatever value is in here. Then, ooh, let's apply our sort. Then do my link equals to the item ledger entry table. And what is the common field? when the item number is equal to the number, and let's add our filter for posting date to finish this off. Ooh, can't type. Where the posting date is equal to this. And I'm filtering by item number. I can filter by item number in my primary table. So let me do number is here. All right, hopefully I spelled everything. Oh, no, what did I misspell? Invalid field star. 
NL rows item inventory posting group inventory oh cell reference is here and then this one goes away. How's that? Okay. Let me open this up in the function wizard so we can see it. <coughs> All right. So I have NL rows make a list of inventory posting groups. Notice I've applied a sort on the inventory posting group and then a secondary sort on the item number. Then I have my link equals and I filter to the item ledger entry table, filter where the posting date is, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now those of you who've worked with me before know that I usually say never put two NL rows functions on the same row. So here's an NL rows function and here's an NL rows function. I, say, I usually would say you should not do this because this will cause problems. Um, I will, however, very frequently talk to people who need a grouping report. And in a grouping report you'll say, oh, I want transactions grouped by the inventory posting group. And that's exactly what this report has become. It's become a grouping report. Um, the only thing I need to change is my cell reference here for inventory posting group needs to be a cell reference over here. And it needs to not be absolute. All right, so now my end result will be I will see um, transactions grouped by um, inventory posting group. Oh, that plus number doesn't make sense. <clears throat> That's all right. Oh, usually helps if you can spell correctly, though. Item, what did I misspell? Oh, no table at the end. <laughs> Try that again. mistake. All right, so I do have my um, the start of a grouping report. I just forgot to expand the replication region. Here I need to say NL rows equals four or two or three or five um, to replicate four rows for each inventory posting group. Okay, so here's the finished inventory posting group then way down here I've got raw materials and way down here I've got resale. Okay, so I have my grouping report that groups transactions by the inventory posting group. So let's circle back. Basic sorting, just do a plus or a minus. When it comes to sorting on linked tables, can only sort by primary table link equals only applies filters does not apply sorting and so we saw the solution to um, wanting to filter sorry wanting to sort by a linked table was to fundamentally change my report where the the table that I want to sort by is the primary table so I built a grouping report. Um, ask me about it later. Shoot me an email if you really don't know the answer. Um, but this handwriting is a little bit less efficient. To go from the item ledger, link equals to the item table, you shouldn't do that. I should have used an NL filter, but in, for the purposes of time, I um, just didn't have the time to do that. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about why, shoot me an email schedule an hour with me, I'd be more than happy to go over the proper way to filter on multiple tables. All right. Um, good. We're almost done. For the gold. The last thing I was going to talk about was dynamic sorting. Not dynamic filter, but dynamic sorting. <clears throat> okay, 
I should charge for this one. <laughs> this is a good one. All right. To do dynamic sorting, um, you have to understand how the options page dialog box works, and you have to know about filters equals. So let's start by implementing a options dialog box. To implement a um, options dialog box, you require the, um, the keywords title, value, and option in row one, column A. So you can see here, because I added those keywords, this dialog box now shows up where I can change the filter criteria and it will modify this report. Great. Um, I'm gonna just tidy the, this up a little bit. So I'm gonna take out my explicit sort orders here. In fact, um, because I'm lazy and I don't like to type a lot, a lo one of the shortcuts I'll use is I will use filters equals for passing in filter criteria. And there's also other reasons to use it, but I like to use the shorthand that I'm lazy. So when I use filters equals, you can put in an array for the filter argument that represents all of the filters that you want to apply to that table. So in this case, D8, 3, E9. Um, here you can see there's a box going around D8, 3, E9, and that will apply that set of filters. Now one of my other tutorial videos, I talked about never filter on the same field twice because it confuses JET sometimes. So I'm going to take out um, the duplicate filtering. Okay. So I've used filters equals to pass in my report criteria. We're just going to run it just to prove that it works. And you can see here that we're um, reporting, running the report. There does not appear to be an explicit sort order. The items are out of order. The dates are, well, it looks like it's sorting by date, but that's because it's sorting by the order that the um, transactions were put in, which is usually date order. What I'm going to do, though, just for the sake of experiment, what would happen if I misspelled posting date? What if I just put in date? I would get an error. I would get an error because it says invalid field date. When you use the filters equal argument, whatever you type into um, the array is what it tries to pass as filters, including the field name. So then what would happen if you put a plus sign in front of post, or er, yeah, yeah, let's do item number just cause that one is obvious. What would happen if you put a plus sign in front of the item number? It looks like, right, because I wrapped it in quotes, it looks like just item number with a plus. Um, and then when I run my report now, I would expect my report to sort by item number. So one, 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 eh, ooh, ah, it is explicitly sorting by item number. Um, and in fact, when a user asks me to apply an explicit sort to the report, a lot of times I'll do it this way. I will let the viewer of the report know that I'm explicitly filtering by item number by passing in the, fil the sort criteria this way. That way, visually, when a user looks at the report, they can tell um, assuming that they know JET, they can tell that it's sorted by item number. I, I call this good handwriting. Um, now for the dynamic part. What if what if you as the user wanted to explicitly choose how to apply the sort? Okay. So what if you wanted, you wanted to be able to type an item number or posting date to change how the sort order is applied? Did you hear that? What if you wanted to be able to type in item number or sorting date 
operative word being if. So let's say hypothetically you typed in the phrase item number, which hopefully will make this filter by item number. So what if I wrote an if statement that says if this is equal to item number, then a type in ooh, item number, otherwise return item number. And if it says posting date, then it's blank. Or rather, then it just says item number. Um, and I'll also add, let's give us the option for sorting by sort source number. Okay. So I'm just going to copy. No, I'm not. If this equals source number then plus source number, else source number. If this equals posting date, then posting date, else posting date. Ha. So now to change, when you change, the text in the sort order option, that changes the source sort order of your report. Do make sure to expand your range to include the new filter criteria. So now you can type in how you want to sort the report. <clears throat> now, some of you may or may not know that trick. I think it's a good one. The one I think that really just takes it home is if you know how to use the NL lookup function to give users a list of values to choose from. So I'm sure you're familiar with NL lookup item show the item number. So many of you will hopefully be familiar with the um, lookup keyword that allows you to define a function that makes a list of items to choose from. That's nice. Um, but when it comes to how do I want the sort order to be, um, you have to actually write a function for the different choices that you want your user to have. So that's going to be NL lookup again. But for the table argument, you're going to define your own array, your own set of values. So the set of choices I want my user to have are posting date, item number, or source number. And then notice that's wrapped in squiggly brackets. Now, every array, and every lookup, rather, has to have a, um, a name. So I'm going to call this custom array um, sort order. And I think that'll work. So I run my report. I now have a lookup here that I can click on. Notice it's called sort order, and it has all of my different choices. I can choose one. And now I can dynamically change, because it passed the plus source order here, it can dynamically change the sort order of my report at runtime. So source, uh, it looks like all the items are down at the bottom, or all the customers are. There you go. All right. <laughs> so what all did we have to use for, we used an if statement and uh, filters equals and an NL lookup. All right. So um, that kind of takes us to the end of the tutorial. Um, again, this was this tutorial was inspired by an email received by a user who wanted to know how to apply um, sorting on a linked table. We talked about one the most cardinal sin of JET reports that every user breaks, which is they modify the report in report mode. And I said, don't do that. So some alternatives we looked at were um, using the scheduler to create a values only workbook or using the table builder um, to actually construct a table. 
we talked about basic sorting, um, building explicit sorting into your Jet Professional reports by using the plus or minus parameter in your filter field on the replicator, the NL rows function. Then I actually got around to addressing the user's question, um, which was to say, you can only sort by the primary table in an, in an NL rows replicator. Link equal only applies filtering, it does not apply sorting. So we saw that the workaround, if you wanted to filter on another table, was you have to build a grouping report. You have to build a report with two NL rows functions. Well, there actually is a way more complicated way of doing it, I imagine, using a, um, using a field cat. No, we're not getting into it. <laughs> it's, it's way more work. Um, and then finally, <laughs> we looked at implementing dynamic sorting um, using an if statement, the filters equal argument, and an NL lookup. Ha. That, my name is Jay Wilson. Uh, I'm a full-time Jet Reports trainer, um, consultant, and report writer. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at jae at onyxreporting.com. more than happy to take on new clients um, as you do your implementations, as you customize your reports, or if you just need some training to get started. Uh, thanks for watching the tutorial, and I look forward to hearing from you. Cheers. Bye.